Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and today I wanted to share one of my pre-constructed custom base decks that you are welcome to use in your games. Crank It Up celebrated its sixth anniversary on Wednesday, and this is my gift back to the community. I am sick and tired of discussing the base deck rules, and more specifically, the insane idea that bases should benefit their faction, and I am also not a fan of decks that are artificially large, but use very few of their cards. It's just setup and shuffling, and makes searching incredibly powerful. In official capacities, I play by the rules. But if I'm going to break the rules, I believe pre-constructed base decks are the way to do so because they are inherently fair. They require no setup, favor no faction explicitly, put an upper boundary on the size for searching, and let you completely detach mechanics from factions. You can just make a deck of self-contained ideas and play. Unlike some of my other decks, this is a 16-card deck that is aware of itself. You'll see what that means in a minute. But there are fixed ratios in terms of VP spreads to ensure that the deck does not break often or the game doesn't end too early. It offers catch-up potential and intrigue at all moments. I have played with this deck extensively at 2-player and even at 3-player too, but I can't vouch for a 4-player, but I also don't care about 4-player, and pre-constructed decks are now my preferred way of playing this game. This is my World Geography deck, and I hope you enjoy it. In the interest of time, I've picked half of the deck to highlight, and this is a narrative order, not necessarily order of preference. First, I want to talk about Auckland, which has a breakpoint of 30. This base will last an eternity. Or will it? There are 10 unique distributions in the set, which Auckland is well aware of, and Auckland loses 3 breakpoints on every one of those. Theoretically, it can be 0, but the game is likely over, and if it comes in as a replacement base, it just eats itself and the game continues with no scoring. It makes what base score matters tremendously, rather than just dogpiling on every 4-2-1 base that comes out. If you assume 5 base scores, and Auckland is the 5th, then you are looking at an 18 breakpoint for 4-2-1, which is reasonable for that point in the game, but it's something you have to keep an eye on all game long. Speaking of unique distributions, Aurora Borealis is a 0-0-0. Borealis is like Unicrave, except there is a point to it. The value of Borealis increases with the level of contention. For every faction represented on a minion there, you get to increase the search pool of a Unicrave effect. This means that playing your partner has more meaning to you than just using a single faction, but it also has more meaning to your rivals. It's extremely dangerous too, because the active player gets control, so they can take a chance on something less favorable, even though they are rarer in the deck. Only 25% of the deck is considered unfavorable for the winner. You don't know what's going to happen, but the more you fight for it, the more certainty that someone will know and get something good, and it becomes a very interesting battleground that isn't dominating, because there are many lower VP bases in the deck as well, so even looking at two doesn't guarantee you that big rewarding payoff. You know what's a great base to hit with Borealis? The Grand Canyon. This is the deck's only 411 base, which offers great catch up potential or the chance to put someone away, but this base is specifically designed to thwart that. The worse you are losing, the more you need this base, and the more benefit you will get from it. And yet if you have movement, you can turn losing into an engine of diminishing returns. I have in fact used this base for plus 8, because I was losing that badly, and it helped me to start to claw back and ultimately win a 3 player game. The fact that it is your regular action play is significant, because it eliminates many action chains. If it were any action play, then you could in guard a bunch, and then do it. But with a regular action play you only get one shot, so if you want to play any action as well, it needs to come from a card play, which really reigns in the ability in a good way. And even if you are still winning, you have a reason to play there because it's very favorable VP, but be careful because your rivals still have that big come from behind potential that you don't. With 4-3-1 bases, it can be really hard to incentivize competing on them, especially in multiplayer when there are more 4-3-2 alternatives. Floriana is really intriguing because holding the lead scales in multiplayer. Each turn, the current leader on Floriana draws a card if they have more power than anyone else there. Ties mean that no one is winning. The catch is that it doesn't matter if you are the active player. In two player, left uncontested, you are drawing a card at the start of the turn that isn't yours. In three player, that could be two cards every round, which gets scary quickly, so players start competing heavily. You still feel good about competing, because you might have gotten cards out of it, and you get more VP than usual. The breakpoint is high enough to allow some rounds of competition, which is important when in turn competition is actually incentivized. In my experience, most players see a 3-1-1 and a 4-2-1, and automatically go for the more VP. 
Beijing puts a stop to that by literally building a wall. Beijing has a low breakpoint of 13, but it pushes each base in play by 5, including itself. However, when it breaks, it will lower the breakpoint, almost like the base is a monster creating a double end swing. This gives you more room to establish your engines while creating some efficient double scores. This is one of my favorite bases to come out as a replacement base on my turn because it completely changed what your rival is doing in response. You break a base, and they are expecting to target one already in play, only they can't now because they need an extra 5. It's great for Aurora Borealis because you can choose the double score if it comes your way, and it comes across as an unexpected unless you really know the deck. For a 3-1-1 base, this certainly got a lot of attention. Having spent significant time with Stasis, I believe there are ways to make it be used creatively, and bases are a perfect outlet for that. London is one of my favorite bases I've ever made, because this can produce four different outcomes in two-player, and I've seen all of them happen to me. London is a sliding scale catch-up base that is also not a catch-up base, but at the same time is still a catch-up base. If I win London, the top card of my deck goes into stasis with four counters, because I got four VP. But if I got second place and two VP, the same card goes in with only two counters. Generally, you win bases on your turn. Stasis counters come off at the start of your turn. This means that for a second place rival, they start their next turn with a single stasis counter and can plan that card with a great deal of certainty. If you are third place, you are getting that card played near immediately, but it also might be too soon. I've won games with the first place stasis card. I've won games with the second place card. I've lost both scenarios too. This is such an intriguing base at the end of the game because at that moment every play matters and this creates a bunch of unexpected plays with discreetly different timing. It definitely enables catch up, but it is not dominant because I've seen every situation play out. You just have to be intentional and adapt to the free play you've been granted. London is also an excellent come at me base because if you can pull it off, you get an even better stasis advantage. And if it doesn't work, you get the stasis advantage in terms of quantity of counters and speed of them coming off. And it doesn't feel spammy because this base only triggers once. If you know me, you know I love making on play timing matter. A base that screams this mentality is Wakaka. And if I'm saying that wrong, blame Captain Cosmic. It's a 5 3 2 base, so a lot of VP are on the line, but because it's an on play, it is largely deterministic, unless the abilities themselves are non deterministic. When I see this base, I feel compelled to play the minion who gives me the most obscurity when it comes to what will happen. I've seen absolutely crazy bonker stuff happen here. One of my moments was in a 3 player game. The active player is 3rd on Aurora Borealis, but because there was so much competition, he had enough factions to pull out Wakaka, and because he had the ability to realize that the on play effects favored him, he actually stole it and got the 5-3-2. While we were staging there, Wakaka was the last thing on our mind, but reading the board, it created a ton of last minute intrigue, but most importantly, it makes the least desirable, least paid attention to label timing matter. My final base that I want to preview is going to require some explanation because it uses a mechanic I invented. But that mechanic is simple and will be explored in a future video because they are future counters. Future counters cannot be used the turn they are gained, but after that, you can use them on your turn as if talents place them. They never expire. They can be power counters, which places power counters, or draw counters, which draw cards. And this created one of the best, most contested ninja bases I've ever made. With ninja bases, you need to incentivize winning. You know what will do that? Giving me three power and three cards that I can use at any moment for the rest of the game in any granularity. If you told me that there would be a game where I willingly broke a ninja base first, sitting on its reward all game long until a crucial moment to turn the tide, I would not have believed you. But that's what this ability does. Because of the value of the ability, players want to win it so they invest more than usual, but it's hard to feel bad about walking away with more VP. It's a base where everyone feels like they won something, except for last place, and that is what a ninja base should do. And if you can manage to solo this, you feel really good about yourself because 3 power is basically the average minion play that you get for free, but you earned it and everyone has equal access to the opportunity. And you need to be really leery about swapping into this base if you are going for the extra VP because of the reward you will be granting to another player. I really love this deck because there is a lot of group think going on, even though some of the bases are still simple. It's a really nice balance and I have never gotten tired of this. It's easy to just pick a base deck and go play. Then swap the factions or swap the base deck and really create different experiences every game. 
After this video airs, I will upload a copy of the base deck for printing in Tabletop Simulator. If you are looking to refresh your games in a simple way, feel free to use this deck as my gift to you. What do you think of the base deck? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.